Thank you for your prayers. Over the planning week, this week, uh, I could feel that, and I appreciate that, and God delivered, and I'm excited about sharing um, the theme for, for 2017 with you guys. At the appropriate time, we have uh, more to do here, um, but it's amazing how when you get into the details, how God is, is right there. Um, when you dig down, God, God has everything put together. He holds everything together. Why are we worried? He's holding everything together for us. And so it's, uh, it was a time of seeing that and rejoicing in that and, uh, and seeing how um, God has 2017 all planned out for us. And um, it's going to be a good year. And I look forward to uh, sharing the scripture that's going to go along with that year. Because um, God plans perfectly. We, we find that um, to be true, like today. We have, uh, do not worry, right after the election. Did I plan that? No, not at all. I, I, um, last year at this same time, I, that wasn't on my radar as I planned the year out. I was just going through self-control and, and looked at Luke and, um, and thought, you know, uh, worry is part of self-control, isn't it? Because we lose our, our self-control in it, don't we? And so, and it kind of led me to, to say, uh, here's this worry scripture, but, but as I looked at the surrounding scripture, it really addresses those deeper things that do lead us to worry, that create anxiety in us. And so we have this, um, we have this like Tasmanian devil inside of us that's running around out of control. And, and so, uh, you know, we have to grab it and take control of it, and, and we're not going to be able to hold on long, so we give it to Jesus. Here you go, because that's the only way we can control ourselves, really. We, we all, this is, this is a, a time of anxiety um, for, uh, for all of us. As, as that scripture was being read, I could sense it in the room that all of us, that speaks to all of us. It certainly speaks to um, how, how can our country be united? Well, uh, everybody needs to exercise self-control, uh, whether you're shocked or elated. Let's get together, and, and it's going to take self-control to do that. And, you know, self-control may be the last of the fruit of the spirits, but it's, it's definitely not the least. In fact, it's completely necessary f- uh, in, in order to have any of the, the fruit of the spirit. If we don't have self-control, then we're not going to be loving and kind and patient. Um, if, if we don't have that self-control, we're definitely not going to have peace and joy the the unless the um, invasive vines are under control, uh, if we allow them to grow over the the fruit, the uh, the fruit tree, then uh, there will the, it will produce no fruit. So it needs to be uh, we need to do our part as the gardener in in uh, control, self control. And Jesus said, um, in order to be my disciples, you must. Sacrifice yourself, take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. So that speaks to what self-control is. It is is taking that self inside us that needs to be under control, denying it, and following Jesus, giving it to Jesus, giving ourself over to Jesus. That's the essence of self-control, and that's, that's how the fruit works anyway. When we put ourself aside and allow Jesus to flow through us, allow the Spirit to flow through us, and then we produce these, these fruits. So self-control is, is a really important piece of the fruit of the Spirit. And so today we want to look at those deeper, those deeper things that, that cause uh, us to lose control of self. And the first one is fear. The disciples, in the context of this verse, the disciples were fearful that uh, Jesus was telling them, the Pharisees were were attacking him, and he was saying, you know, this is what's going to happen, guys. And so they're seeing it happen, and they're seeing these these, uh, men of power um, 
coming after him and plotting against him, and so they were fearful. And he said, this is 12, 4 through 7, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after killing the body, has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You know, and, and under, the, um, under the context for us of, uh, of this all-encompassing media uh, that's, uh, that uh, is focusing on the, uh, the political uh, the election and, and what's going on, uh, the political div divide in our country, um, we get a little distracted and we think that this is, this is it. This is the all-powerful. This is what's going to save us. Um, and so we lose track of God, our fear of the Lord, and we lose track of recognizing the threat of Satan. And, you know, Satan likes no more than to be uh, unidentified as a serious threat because then he just comes and goes as he pleases. And so if we're not focused on who our a real threat is, who is our most significant threat, it's, it's not people that think politically different than you in the United States. That is not your greatest threat. It's not the candidate of the other party or the folks that are leading that other party. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but the principalities and powers of evil. And it's also very important to understand our greatest asset. It is not the White House or Congress or Senate or any of that is not our greatest asset. Our greatest asset is that we have a creator that cares for us. A sparrow doesn't fall to the ground without him knowing about it, without him allowing it. He, and he cares so much more for us. You, you, we, we, as, as important as the birds are, uh, that he's saying, I, I care for the birds. Now, Look at you, you who are made in the image of God, who were chosen before the creation of God, who are sealed in the Holy Spirit. Do you think that, that there's an expiration on God's care and love for you? That all of a sudden, well, you know, I did yesterday, but today's a different story, so sorry. I'm not going to care for you anymore. I'm going to just let it all spiral out of control and, and let you waste away. We, why, why do we think this? Why, are, why do we think God is going to abandon us? His perfect love casts out fear. Per that's, that's how we can get rid of the fear that's deep inside us, is we can focus on his perfect love and care for us, and it will cast aside the fear that tries to drive us out of control, the fear that Satan pushes that we would be out of control, that we would be angry and harmful to others. That's exactly what Satan wants us to do. And so to stop that cycle, we have to take control by getting in touch with perfect love and let it cast the fear out. The, the beauty of fearing God is you fear nothing else. If we're truly in touch with the fear of God, we have no other fears. So the second deep driver is our worry. Worry. Someone in the crowd, as Jesus was speaking, said, make my brother share the inheritance with me. <laughs> Hey, I need a miracle. Make my brother share the inheritance with me. I'm not sick or anything, so, you know, I don't need a healing, but here's what I do need, Jesus. Come on. Can you do it for me? 
Uh, and Jesus saw what was eating at him. It's called a dollar sign, isn't it? You know, and this is um, part of what eats at us. I, I think this is may, maybe just a theory on my part that may be what's driving uh, a lot of our political anxiety and anger because we feel like it's going to affect our bottom line, our wallet. That's really what's driving it, isn't it? Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. And then the first one he uses is he goes to the birds again with the ravens and says, Look, the ravens don't store up. The ravens don't have a 401k. They don't have Social Security. They don't have any life insurance. And they, and they haven't missed a meal. They haven't missed a meal since. So, you know, keep that in mind. This is uh, Luke 12, four th uh, 24 through 26. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, I like this one, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his or her life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? In essence, what difference is your anxiety going to make? What, dif what difference do you think this anxiety is going to make for the good? It, we know about the bad. We know about all the health consequences. We know about that it leads us into losing our self-control, therefore not producing any, any of the fruits of the Spirit. We know about the overwhelming power of anxiety. I mean, um, it's, there's, there's so many young people and, and every, of all ages that are overwhelmed with anxiety. It's, it's debilitating. And then he goes to the lilies in, in reference to clothing and says, you know, they don't labor or spin. They don't make any, all this. They don't, uh, they don't shop. Sorry, girls. They, they're, not, they just, they're just beautiful. And not even Solomon, not even King Solomon in, in all his glory was as beautiful as the lilies of the field. Verse 28, if that is how God clothes, clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And, and now he's really getting at what uh, worry is. It's a lack of faith. It's, it's a consequence of small faith. It's frankly telling God, I don't trust you. I don't trust you with this, God. Therefore, I'm going to worry about it, and I'm going to try to take control of it instead of having self-control of that worry and giving it to Jesus instead of trusting God. You know, Jesus didn't, he, he talked about food and clothes. He failed to mention um, appliances, televisions, vehicles, um, you know, all the master suites, all the stuff that we really, come on, Jesus, come on. You know, <laughs> he, he didn't mention those. But I, I, I do want to ask you, has, has, has God not taking care of you up to this very minute? Has, has he not? Has he not? Does, does, does he not know exactly what we need and he provides it? Why are we worried? And the third one is your heart. This is Luke 12, 29 through 34. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. 
for the pagan world runs after all such things, the, the pagan world, and your father knows that you need them, but seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. You know, there's, there's nothing will create more anxiety than, actually, than actual wealth. <laughs> This is, this is a purse that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And, and here's, here's self-control as well, is to recognize when our heart is out of control and seeking, running, you know, we, it's, it's hard because we, uh, we see, we see all the advertisements on TV. They're, they're, they're really effective at getting into your heart and making you think you need these things and creating an anxiety in yourself that, oh, I need that, don't I? I need more of that. Uh, we, com we, we compare ourselves with others. And it leads us to set our hearts on material things. You know, when you know when you set your heart on something, when you when my heart is set on that Jeep, you know, <laughs> or my heart is set on you know, we know you know deep down when you've set your heart on something because it takes control of you. You've lost your self-control. You become a bulldozer. And you're like, I am going to get that <laughs> no matter what. And then, you know, uh, forget the consequences. We need to recognize when we're out of control. We need to recognize. And then we need to give that to Jesus. We need to set our heart on the kingdom. We need to recognize and say, we, we, we need to leave that at the table along with our worry today. Because we know that God gives us what we need at the perfect time. That he provides beyond all we can ask or imagine. And somehow uh, we forget this. And we start looking at other people and what they have. And our hearts lose control. I, my parents were at the uh, at planning week with me, which was great because then I had my mom's uh, dinners every night, so that was uh, that was all right. And then my dad was there to um, give me a, a pep talk every once in a while, and um, and really not we were just in we would in, enjoy each other's company. But I did get a, a sermon or two out of pop. And uh, one of them was as, as they're going through um, getting rid of things, um, material possessions, um, their book collection and, you know, furniture and, get, you know, you're getting rid of your stuff in a house that you've lived in for 40 years. It's not easy. Most people um, just die and dump it on their, their kids to sort it out, or the neighbors. <laughs> uh, when we moved into our house in College Park, we were, we were surrounded by six old ladies living by themselves in the house. That they, and I said, Murray, that's going to be you. I'm going to be long gone, and you're going to be old lady by yourself. And, um, they <laughs> and then what would happen is the, the old lady would die, and there's still two tough as nails that are still going and um but you know what happens is all their stuff ends up it's you know they, they die and then then the the estate sale and um then the you know stuff is gone real quick and then uh, some young couple in college park goes in and knocks the old house down and builds another house that's what happens every time um so you just watch it and um you know, back to what my dad said, he just said, you know, 
you get in touch with the fact that only the spiritual stuff has any lasting value. You know, on, only spiritual things have lasting value. And that's what Jesus, Jesus has. Jesus is the only one that has eternal perspective. And he, and he took on flesh and tried to give us a little, little bit of that vision to say, you know, look, God's going to give you what you need here on earth. Why are you so worried? Why are you storing things up? Why are you setting your heart on these things that rust and can be stolen and are here today and gone tomorrow and you can't take them with you? And why, why are you so focused on these as, as if they will make you happy? It is the spiritual things. It is the kingdom. It is God's kingdom where happiness is found. And so focus on that. Set your heart on that. That's what's really valuable. And then, then the fourth thing is to serve. Now here's, here's where we're really getting at, at the key to getting over ourselves, to really having self-control, to taking that Tasmanian devil of self and really putting it in control, uh, is to serve. And then in Luke, he, he goes on, and he was speaking to the crowd, but then he'd, he'd really teach to the disciples. He'd really explain and, and teach them. And he said, this is Luke 12, 35, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. And so he told the parable of the servants were in the master's house, and the master went for a wedding, which could be, um, you know, a several-day affair plus the travel of wherever it was so that some master's gone for a while and you're not exactly sure when he's coming back uh, you need to be you need to have your uh, lamp on and you need to be ready for his return ready to serve and serving him of course during that time um, that you know the the home needs to be functioning and the, the grass needs to be mowed and you know these things uh, you need to be ready for his return and and Peter goes you talking to me that's, you know, another great Peter line. Are you talking to us or to them, Peter says. <laughs> and Jesus says, let me tell, let me rephrase the parable a little bit. There was a master, and then there was the master's manager of the servants. And the master goes away for a long time. The manager then loses his self-control, starts indulging on the master's meat and wine starts losing his control with the other servants starts abusing the other servants and so yes peter i'm talking to you you my followers should be an example you are to be leaders you're called to be leaders of service we are called this is uh, verse 48 for everyone who has been given much much will be demanded and from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. We have been given gifts in order to serve others. Here, if we do this, let me make my political statement. If we use our gifts to serve others, we will make America great again. That's how it's going to happen. All right? That's how greatness happens. That, that's, that's the secret. If we're hoping that the president the, or the president-elect is going to save us, let me tell you, let me, have, let me, let me prophesy <laughs> how we are going to make our community great, ourselves, and those around us in our nation is to use the gifts that God has given us to serve others. And that's when we get over ourselves. That's when we get control of ourselves. When we stop focusing so much on ourselves and we use the gifts and we use God's call and we t start taking responsibility for them and we start being good leaders, start being followers of Jesus. You know, the, there's no, no, no powers of this world can produce the fruit of the Spirit for us and no powers of this world can stop us from producing the fruit of the Spirit. 
only ourselves, and that's why we need self-control. We, the, it, you know, the one thing we can control is we can control ourselves, and we can give ourselves to Jesus. We can come to the table today, and we can lay our worry down. We can lay our fear down. We can we can set our heart on the kingdom, and we can ask God to call us into service. That's what we can. And that's what we always can do, and that's what we're called to do. So let's do it.